Welcome to the Hospitality Chat podcast. My name is Matthew Rahman and my co-host here, uh, Mr. Matthew Drummond Pointer. And this is Audipin's, you know, video production based um, project, the Hospitality Chat, where we talk about things related to hospitality and anything between for the restaurant industry, like any f- information, themes or discussing topics that are occurring today in our society and how it would benefit or have an impact to our industry here and in relation to the services that we provide through our applications that we provide on order pin we also would like to give more of an extension of ourselves of this company by giving the extra helping hand here and there you know themes topics or tactics that would, would help our clientele as well as people in the restaurant industry to improve upon themselves and we will have a few friends guests co-workers everyone to be part of this project because i feel like this is something that would help everyone but us also bring a bigger community of the restaurant industry together and what better to start with is how we would promote our restaurants and you know the role of websites i would think consider be like you know, the first frontier of the online forum in terms of digitizing your business. And wouldn't you say you would agree with that, the role of websites themselves? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, in the past decade alone, we've seen people increasingly use online spaces uh, more and more. Very few people now don't use the internet for some reason or another. And as a result, kind of using that kind of like more constant stream of content on the internet to promote your own restaurant is increasingly key because of the sheer amount of people who are on these particular places. And while you can do this through social media channels and such like, and those are certainly very effective things we can perhaps talk about some other time um, restaurants uh, should really consider getting their own websites because your website allows you to kind of control every single aspect of how your restaurant presents itself you can customize the overlay the theming to kind of like project the brand image that you want to have and it's just generally a good idea because you can host all kinds of useful services on there I mean, it also legitimizes your brand and also establishes your own brand and showing a sense of professionalism as well on how you would present your image of of your business and your restaurant. And it is important to like show that, oh, if we're going to do this, we have to be committed to show before like the battle of, you know, the actual service happens. It begins way before your business opens. It's about how you marketing and promoting your restaurant as well. And you know through the elements of say using social media websites in particular you can also it has such a multi-purpose function where it could be for you know like showcasing your menu items showcasing your like your location what the history of your restaurant is about and not only that you can implement a an online ordering system into your restaurant in case you don't want to uh, what if you don't want to be part of like through a third party service like Just Eat, Uber Eats and Deliveroo uh, and many others. If you don't want to be part of like through, through a third party, you can, you know, do like your own sense of like an online infrastructure of your business through making an online ordering system. I mean, a lot of website builders do that, like Squarespace, Wix, Weebly and any other website builder that would help. And not only that, it's become much more easy for coding and as well as building your website to build a system like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nowadays, uh, while previously, perhaps in the past, websites, you kind of needed a knowledge of coding, HTML, PHP, CSS, and JavaScript. Nowadays, with the advent of tools such as Wix and Squarespace and how these tools are now really good, um, it's kind of not really necessary to learn programming to make a perfectly functional and good looking website. While obviously if you're really making it bespoke, those are certainly approaches that you may want to consider taking. But if you're kind of a smaller restaurant, which you know, you don't have the budget to really like hire a programming, or you don't have the time because you're a small business owner to really kind of learn programming yourself, Wix and Squarespace and such like have got you completely covered. They're excellent services. And as you say with um, online ordering, if you want to integrate online order to kind of get those kinds of like takeaway uh, customer base or to put like a reservations feature on your site or something like that so your customers can know about that in advance you can do that fairly easily because a lot of these places have like these kind of sh- uh, shops for like third party apps and like plugins and stuff that you can like stick into your uh, website's overlay and such like to add those particular features and just 
And with that simple process, you've made your website 10,000 times more functional. Reservations, for example, if you have a reservations feature on your website, you're saving a lot of time there because your customers don't have to like ring you up in advance or come into your restaurant and such like. They can just, they can just put it in, they'll be logged into the system, uh, the system itself will keep usually keep track of the number of reservations you have available so it'll be able to tell your customers if there are no more reservations available and also you'll be able to it'll keep track when it keeps track of all this it will let you know therefore how many of these reservations that you actually have which means that you can prepare you know if there's going to be like a particularly busy dinner service that you otherwise wouldn't have seen coming it can enable you to do that and make sure you've got all hands on deck ready for that kind of stuff I mean, that is something that we want, um, that restaurants should be doing, you know, because sometimes you have to make sure, like, you know, showcasing it, you have to make sure organization's key. And through that organization of your restaurant, trying to establishing yourself as well, I think it would further kind of like incite your customers to come to your restaurant a lot more, like trying to alert them. It's, it's a sense of an attraction, especially with, um, I would say, one of the features of a website would be very good of it is, showcasing your menu like maybe it's a way of making your website look good just have your food items in your website browser and it would be including like so getting a food photographer for example to take pictures i mean examples people take their pictures of their food all the time and sometimes you can implement your social feed into your website like i would have in my website i think maybe daniel might show my website and like how i do my photography i put my social feed in under my one would be a social gallery as well as other restaurants that would do life. I mean, a lot of people take their own pictures as well with their food and post onto social media and showing that social feed. And I know other restaurants do that, including one local to my area, like the Ottoman Donna. That's a good example of what they're doing as well. But also just like, especially when we went to that place uh, when we were recording about climate change, I think, do you remember that amazing- Oh yeah, yeah. The vegan- Meat burger, was it? Uh, meat burger. Uh, I could never forget, I'm telling you, it's such a, it's, it's like, it was like when we were taking pictures of it and doing like our videography, I mean, Daniel will probably show around here, you know, just just like almost like us kind of really rotating the camera around, zooming it in, moving back and also just taking pictures of themselves. I just, uh, I'm telling you, it's just like you want to have that sense of attraction when you look at your item at first sight. And sometimes a lot of um, restaurants, fast food establishments would, um, and from high to low end places, they always implement photography along to their websites and what's in synergy i mean we're going to talk a lot about photography in the next one but it was it is a key thing to have that attraction you want to catch your eyes from the moment they set upon your site as well as because essentially it is your like your ad your advertisement board your website in an online scale an online atmosphere Yes, I think that's definitely key. Um, your website kind of is almost like when someone's browsing online, it's your opportunity to make a first impression to your customer, which kind of with how disconnected the internet is, while previously this could be done through talking to people and such like, nowadays in order to kind of win over the kind of more emotional side of people through good impressions, which is kind of one half to making a good sale and getting someone to go to your restaurant, um, you kind of, how good your website is, how well it showcases your restaurant, like decor and food and such like as you said about earlier with m showcasing menu items and such like um, that's all very much key to kind of showing those things if, so, if you have like a shoddier looking website or one that's not very easy to navigate users will see this as a reflection on your restaurant itself which kind of is not exactly the image that you want to go for therefore you want to make your website as smooth good looking and reflective of your brand image as possible to um kind of give that good impression going and so when your customer comes in they're already primed to have a good time in that kind of way at the same time as well you have to make sure as well as you want to make your website as modern and responsive as you can we also have the obligation um, we have it's, it's our it's, it's the modded of us as well uh, of the restaurant itself, the business itself, to protect the customer as well online as well, through like um, respective privacy online as well as secure um, data securement. You know, I think you probably have heard like the general data protection and regulation laws, right? Yes, absolutely. I kind of um, I did a customer training service course a while back, and one of the things that they talked about quite a lot on that one was uh, how careful you got to be with users' data because getting on the wrong side of them. Um, 
the general data protection regulation could not only uh, jeopardize the customer which is already bad but then also you've got kind of scandals and then you've also probably going to end up in legal trouble as a result because if it's kind of shown that you aren't taking ad adequate precautions then that's going to kind of, that's going to be a legal problem um other other stuff related to security um i'd advise everyone make sure that their website's ssi certificates up to date um that's the kind of that's kind of like security uh thing which kind of encrypts the connection between um your website and the user so it keeps your data it keeps both sides data completely safe and secure which is especially important if you have online ordering services yeah. which kind of require taking personal details bank details that kind of thing um yeah. And also, if you don't have an up-to-date one, then you're actually gonna then the user will actually get warned by Google nowadays. Now that we've all moved to HTTPS rather than uh, just HTTP, um, which results in obviously it'll say this data website's not secure, and it'll say back to safety, and we have to click through like multiple options to be able to actually navigate to your website. Firstly. Very few people are going to click through that one just because they can't be asked. But secondly of all, they're also just got, not going to do it because they might be nervous about uh, having their data unsecured in that way. Which obviously at that point you're probably losing like, uh, I'd say I'd say 60% of your customers maybe. And I'm, I think I'm being optimistic there just because they were too nervous or they just couldn't be bothered to kind of click through all that. I mean, you mean like the secure socket layers certificate, right? That's the one. Yeah. I mean that is really important as well. But like encryption, encrypting the data that you that is provided by the customers, as well as respecting the privacy of it, not to uh, like not to divulge anything like that to any third parties as well, is important because that could lead to like extreme legal and criminal criminal ramifications. <clears throat> yes, no, exactly. And while on the topic of um, use, uh, users clicking off if a website's too uh, difficult to navigate through, you also want to make sure that your website loads really quickly. Um, studies show, I can't remember the exact statistics offhand, but a significant majority of people will click off after if a website takes about five seconds to load and you're already losing something like 20 to 30 percent after even something like two seconds. People are very used to websites loading basically instantly now to the point where if a website takes a while to load, they're going to click off again. That's going to be a reduction in your revenue because they're not going to bother trying to find your restaurant or place an order on your online ordering service. Service, which just isn't if you're making a website you want to get these people to your website so you absolutely should be removing as many barriers as possible some ways that you can kind of make your website load quicker um, would be stuff like making sure that your images are relevantly compressed uh, because images in the raw format that they're in are actually quite weight uh, large and take a long while to load so uh, yeah. there's various like image compression services that you can find or, online that would really help with that one or also like because I know a lot of people, a lot of photographers in particular, would like to take their pictures raw. There's also when, you know, basically reviewing them is make sure they export it to JPEGs as well, to have a JPEG format of the same picture. I mean, it is, it is perfectly normal to, like, make your editions of your photos in raw, but make sure to export them in JPEG. Otherwise, it would be too big to handle at once. And not only that, some, um, um, some raw files could be inc incompatible with a lot of websites. Yes, exactly. Um, on similar topics of kind of accessibility to mass users, um, you've also got to very much consider the mobile uh, market with a lot of these things. Um, because nowadays, I believe it's over 50%, it might even be over 60% of users nowadays um, on the web are actually using it from their mobile device rather than their PC. Um, this isn't just relevant to like, you have to make sure your websites load really quickly because they might have a bit less computing power on average in some cases, but also because to do with like, how your website displays on smaller screens because of course uh, most PCs have a fairly wide uh, monitor meanwhile phones have a very kind of narrow and rectangular one and you've got to make sure that your website kind of looks amazing on both of those um, there's kind of two ways to go about this one where um, either you set your website up so it has like you have different like versions for like several like screen sizes this is called kind of an adaptive layout um, or you can set everything up to um, kind of like each element on your website takes up a proportion of your website and then it's kind of in this like fluid grid which like shrinks um, depending on like the screen size that it's using and this is called a responsive layout um, that being said the latter is a lot harder to set up so I don't blame restaurants if they go for the adaptive layout
Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's like, including with um, what you say about mobile layouts, it's just as important to work on your the website layout of your of your business in a mobile setting because you know, like you said, everyone access with their websites on the phone all the time. And if it's so, if it's so, if if it's really the, the standards that you have for like a desktop website, you know, very accessible, highly responsive, it should translate even more better in the website in in your in your in the mobile phones as well like because if it's so unresponsive or it's too tricky to navigate like everything's so squashed in too much at once here yeah, it's an instant turn off oh god yes i was i've been navigating through a few websites that clearly weren't designed for mobile at all and i can't count the number of times their menu they're like drop down menus just don't work and it's like you try and press something but it's just like there's like 50 million other like little buttons occupying almost the exact same spot so you just like, end up clicking like, around load the place it's kind of like you're one finger and it ends up going it's kind of like <laughs> oh you press on the wrong button it's like when it's too squashed in it's kind of like the back you know like the early early stages of all, um, mobile gaming you know when it's too squashed in <laughs> yes <laughs> when the screens were so small oh, or like in a blackberry God. where like you know the phones like back then it was like you know with the cursor it was like it was back but it was so interesting now how we look at it it's like it's just like what we learned from the past you know builds like feedback for the future kind of thing you know yeah exactly but um oh yeah. God. no no, no ignore me was i was just, I'll just um, say, yeah. yeah so other things you can kind of do to make your website more immediately kind of like accessible and uh, easy to navigate is when organizing your like little toolbar at the top of your page mm -hmm. um kind of like how you order those particular buttons is kind of really actually relevant though it may not seem so at the time you want to have your most used options the options you most think your customers are going to use like say your home page your menu your reservation features and such like to the left um because we all read like left to right um and that they want to generally speaking you want them to be able to read across and find their stuff as quickly as possible because every second that they're browsing around is another second that they could spend going somewhere else uh, meanwhile, your lesser used stuff like FAQs and such like, put that one a bit more to the right because people can still see it, but they're less likely to immediately need, the bulk of your traffic is less likely to immediately use it. Yeah, I mean, it's all about making sure like, because I know like a lot of websites, like say if it's like streaming services as well, like, you know, like say a particular episode comes out, especially, and it's really common in anime in particular as well, where a lot of people crash the servers of the websites because so many people, the online traffic of it, of that website was so heavy on the day of the release. It's, it's just like, you have to be considered when you're opening a business, you have to make sure that your website's also strong enough to com compute all of this online traffic that is coming its way through its everyday basis. Yeah. Um... Other kind of like content that you can like use to display on your website to kind of uh, showcase your how good your website is and such like I guess would be stuff like uh, customer reviews actually. Um, you can showcasing positive reviews and such like is an excellent way to kind of like show um, how your restaurant um, impresses people and such like and uh, just what just what your customer base thinks. Um, but obviously, you probably will want to select your reviews a bit carefully, and uh... yeah, and but not only that, reviews that come out from customers online yet, like no one's very like, for me, for my experiences, any review that you get sh should be proven legitimate. I mean, like anything that's taken into consideration, it's about how you respond online as well, because there will be some good reviews, but there'll also be some bad reviews. But they, you, it's about how you respond properly online, because I've seen restaurants that like online reviews in particular we've seen restaurants that had bad review bad responses to negative feedback and uh i mean I, i'm just saying it's like it's very dangerous like regardless of the legitimacy of it it's all about how you respond officially because even responding in the most unprofessional manner is a big turn off for customers if anything it feels like it's giving them like a almost a sense of warning if they read from the owner's or the manager's response to the, um, you know, the negative feedback by the customers themselves. 
Yes, definitely. On the first point, yeah, absolutely. You want to make sure the reviews you're selecting are obviously legitimate. I, most customers can smell fake reviews a mile off. Um, yeah. But in, uh, the other stuff to do with responding to reviews, yes, you want to be very careful of that one. I know certain restaurant owners really kind of like go into the trenches. They kind of like can't let like a bad review yeah. go and they try and like argue with them and such like. And you've got to be careful. Obviously, correct the record when possible. I'm, no, I'm never going to discourage that one, yeah. but be careful not to get bogged down in that one because showcasing reviews Use, obviously an excellent way to bring it in but users will probably then check out your other reviews and if you're being kind of unprofessional with how you respond to the other stuff they're gonna see that too so yeah definitely keep your responses to reviews professionally if you're going to be going down this particular tactic and in general because how you respond to reviews is kind of a showcase of how your restaurant kind of engages with the public and uh, well kind of users will kind of think about that when they're going in to your restaurant and how you're going to treat them I mean, it's also important as well, like, especially, um, it's almost like a preview to your customer service um, skills and your staff's hospitality skills as well. It's a preview as well. Like, so when you go into the restaurant, yeah, how would you feel when you got, it's like, how would your customers would feel if they seen that? And then when they go into the restaurant, what they seen online is translated to real life as well. That's the, that kind of sense of anxiety. You want to make sure that when you respond online as well, the, your usage of social media and as well as online reviews and stuff like that, Google reviews or what and whatnot, you have to make sure that you give them like such confidence that say, oh, we will take that into consideration. Also, make say thank you for coming. I would like to hope to see you again, you know, and hope to um, see the improvements that we made from the next time you visit. And it's like these little things are so. Oh, maybe they do care what the customers say because, you know. If you if someone who doesn't, it's kind of like, oh, you kind of sense of worry and dread when they come to the service. Some will be like either when they go in to be anxious or not go at all, just avoid it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I completely agree. And I think you really hit on something when you said uh, kind of it's a preview of your customer service. And I think perhaps that's kind of like how we could kind of actually describe the role of websites, um, aside from providing utility overall. It's almost like a preview of your restaurant's decor, how slickly you handle like creating services, your customer service, all that. Your restaurant kind of serves as a preview, a first impression, as I, I think I said earlier, of all of those aspects of your restaurant and that's kind of why uh, all of your online conduct on your website, um, your website itself, all of that should be handled as well as possible because you want to, you want your preview to be good. You want your preview to be something enticing that gets the customer want to come back for more, come to your restaurant, check it out, click the address page and take a look. And you don't want it to be doing the opposite and driving them off or making them going, oh God, these guys have got a horrible website. Yeah, I mean, it is like like I said, it's like an advertisement board, an ugly advertisement board. Ain't gonna attract anyone further. It's, I mean, it would just be, end up being some weird, obscure thing, and they'd be like, "Well, oh, what's that restaurant kind of advertising? Is a bit poor." It's like, you know, it feels like you want to make sure you have the sense of professionalism carried out on your restaurant wherever you go, whether it's through online or in real life. And also, and not only that, I think when we're talking about the like by the design of it it's like where to do it is more important as well like the making of the websites it's nowadays the website builders themselves like say squarespace wix weebly they become they're like i would say my three main kind of like um you know website builders because they're much more easier they make they have a lot of good modern designs that are already preset but you can also make your own design as well regardless but it's just the new improvements that they have kind of like made it important for restaurants to take in the initiative, if that makes sense, to oh, open up to their restaurant and sign in and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think kind of a lot of the increased demand for um, websites overall have really kind of spurred on a lot of these online tools to be really, really good. Because um, I can vaguely yeah. remember when I was kind of like, I guess, in my early teens or something like that, a lot of these like, website tools were uh, pretty bad. But nowadays, uh, when most of my stu uh, student friends and such like yeah. were looking for jobs and such like wanted to set that made their bios and portfolios and such like uh, stuff like Squarespace and stuff is now the first yeah. is now the first port of call rather than I don't know I trying mean, to a, WordPress was like the most professional if anything the most expert in mode of website building I mean for me I think I'll probably show like a screenshot here about my website I made it from Wix you know like Daniel you know the, <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> but like I think uh, 
my website really like was a portfolio itself like my creative portfolio like shows my kind of like my history my my about page my blogs of my my making like my old behind the scenes making of different projects that I've done but also with um freelance work as well as my photography and videography which I really need to build up by the way which is one thing but websites have so many skills and it's different ways to be, be made and I think the way to end off this um, podcast I think is how you set yourself off like in terms of how your color scheme is you know like your color scheme tells a lot about you as a person or your business but I think it's about how it's just I think websites now is showing it's how you would represent yourself now it's the new online leveling field for businesses your marketing promotion your advertising board just to say the least but also it's your preview to your hospitality service I think that's the way to end the service to know that it's your preview and from then on I hope this will be a helpful use to the hospitality industry and hopefully there'll be more to come with with our podcast episodes that we need to say the hospitality chat so yeah I mean I'm I'm excited to do more I mean obviously we obviously we didn't mention this from the beginning we're working from homes you know due to like the uncertainties of the pandemic that we're like like I said it's still uncertain with the variants but hopefully sooner or later it'll it'll pass by and enjoy the happier times to come but yeah I think you know despite working from home it's pretty nice you know sitting down talking about the topics that we're doing and I feel more comfortable like you know just seeing how we can move on with the topics I think keeps everything on the relative level you know we're all the same we're all in this together I think so yeah I think the first episode of the podcast is done how do you feel man are we still going are we still going on tape <laughs> yeah I mean we're still on tape right now so lovely yeah. um yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I was a bit of a research nut when I was in university. Um, yes, admittedly, this is, admittedly, I did biology, so this is a far away from researching like rat intestines or something. But uh, <laughs> a lot more of a pleasant topic, I'll say, if nothing else. Um, and there's, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of information out there, and yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to like researching and digesting it down. I think for me as well, I worked in, um, I did a degree in contemporary media practice. So I try different forms of media like photography, filmmaking, like right? you no know, documentary making, like computing arts as well as visual, like visual art pieces. Whether it's uh, ext- like you know like installation arts, live art, would you say? Like I try different things here and there, but I'm very attached to filmmaking as well as photography. But hopefully, working in a podcast setting would help to show like you know the the possibilities of what you can do, and I think hopefully doing these episodes hopefully to everyone here today would enjoy what we're doing so and also to learn that the many possibilities to advertisement and promotion and it could be something simple as talking about the restaurant's origins or whatnot i'm just saying this is this is the open to possibilities and i think that's the way to go about it but anyway we need to sign off and see you in the next one everyone this is the hospitality chat my name is Mehdi rahman this is my friend matthew drum pointer hopefully to see you again Take care and goodbye.